Hi everybody, I have a brilliant idea. Let's think about light. That's pretty brilliant, isn't it? Well, what does light have to do with atoms? The answer is, it has a lot to do with atoms. It tells us about atoms, like how the shells are arranged, and it tells us you know, a lot of information about um, how we can identify what's found in a compound. We use light all the time in chemistry. So, um, chapter four, it's eventually, this is eventually gonna lead us to talking about the arrangement of electrons and atoms. So this is video one, introduction to light. We have three objectives today. Number one, how does light interact with matter? Number two, let's look at the spectrum types that are we often use in chemistry. And number three, let's think about the properties of light. So, let's get on with this. Well, all right, here we have two solutions. Kind of like this solution right here. It's a, it's blue, a blue solution. It turns out that if we shine yellow light on this, through this, we try to shine yellow light through this uh, blue solution, it doesn't make it through. But if we shine white light on the blue solution, it does go through. Uh, blue light does go through. And if we shine blue light on it, blue light also goes through. So these different colored, um, different colors um, react or interact differently with light. So here's my light bulb again, and here's the blue solution. So I'm going to put it here in front. What color comes through? Blue. And then what about this? As you see the light hitting the, the blue solution and then bouncing back, you can see that that's blue too. So we're talking about light going through, light bouncing off, and also what colors don't make it through a solution. Okay. Well, the three terms that we want to work with today are transmission, absorption, and reflection. So you probably want to write those down. Transmission of light, absorption of light, and reflection of light. In this case, with our blue solution, only blue light can make it through. So going through, going through, which of these terms means it goes through? Is it reflection? goes through now. Absorption, that means it doesn't go through. Transmission, that's the word that means it goes through. If we have a yellow solution, here's a yellow solution, and we shine yellow light on this, zoom, it goes right straight through. That means that the yellow light is transmitted. All right? If we shine white light through it, yellow light makes it through. Because as you remember from earlier uh, science classes, when you take white light and you shine it at a prism, it makes all the colors of the spectrum. So white light can, does have yellow, yellow light in it, and the yellow light makes it through. But if we shine blue light through the yellow solution, we try to shine it through the yellow solution, it doesn't make it through. So the blue light doesn't make it through. It's not transmitted. What do you say about that? The blue light does not make it through. Which one of these words means doesn't make it through? The answer is absorption. That means the blue light is absorbed. It goes through, it tries to go through, but it's absorbed. Something about the chemicals in there take in the blue light and don't let it proceed through the solution. If you think, think about reflection, that just means bouncing off. So uh, a minute ago, I showed you the blue solution and hopefully you saw the light hit it, bounce off, and uh, that term is reflection. So that's our first objective. Know those three words. Second object, objective was, Thinking about spectral ty types, well, there are three different spectral types that we use in chemistry. They are continuous, which mean, which usually uh, comes from a hot solid, and that means that all the colors of the spectrum are given off. Then there's an emission spectrum, or emission spectra, that's plural. And emission spectra means just some colors are given off, and that usually comes from a low-pressure gas, and we'll do several experiments with this. And then absorption spectrum, or absorption spectra, and that means that some of the colors are absorbed. They don't make it through. And often, uh, we're talking about dust clouds or chemicals around stars that absorb some of the colors. Let's look at them right here. Well, here's a light bulb. And in an old-fashioned light bulb, which are being phased out now in favor of um, fluorescent light bulbs, there was a little tiny metal wire in here, and that was called a filament, made out of tungsten. 
Anyway, when you ran electricity through that, it got really, really hot and gave off all the colors of the spectrum. So if you look, if you took a prism right here, you'd see all the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all the colors, Roy G. Biv, they're all given off by a hot solid. The second type of spectrum is called an emission spectrum, and that comes from a low pressure gas. So we're gonna have these uh, long, skinny light bulbs that have argon or neon or helium or oxygen gas in them. And we're going to take a look at, when we heat them up, what colors are given off. And we're going to see that there's not the entire spectrum given off, but only a few different colors are given off. Maybe there's a red and an orange and a green, but there's no violet or there's no, you know, various other colors. Just a few different colors are given off. That's called an emission spectrum. Emission spectrum from a low density gas inside of a bulb. Or it could be from a hot gas, uh, you know, in some other place. Well, if you have a, a complete spectrum be, being given off by like a light bulb again, and you have something on the outside of it, some sort of gas or some sort of uh, substance here that absorbs some of the colors, you're supposed to get Roy G. Biv, all the colors. But you see, oh, we're missing some of these colors here and there. All right? This is called an absorption spectrum, or an absorption line spectrum, they call it right here. And um, this is a uh, this is often used in chemistry as well. So those are the three different types of spectra. We'll talk more about these during labs. Well, our third and final uh, concept of the day is properties of light. Well, in chemistry class, we're often going to call light electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation. This smartboard is not behaving again. Okay, we don't need that anyway, do we? Electromagnetic radiation, often we'll call it EM rad. EM rad. It's a great way to talk, uh, talk about this. Why, why don't we just call it light? Well, in my mind, light means just red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and to go about the visible part of the spectrum, but there's different wavelengths too. There's microwaves, like in a microwave oven, and there's gamma rays and X rays and ultraviolet or UV rays and infrared. There's radio waves, there's many different types. And so, usually the light it just means visible. So EM, ra electromagnetic radiation, EM rad means all the different types of radiation out there. All right, well what does it consist of? Light, you know, it travels, so it must, there must be something there. Well, there are these curiously weightless particles called photons. Now don't think proton, because it's not proton, it's photon. P-H-O-T-O-N. Protons were found in the nucleus. We're not talking about those now. Light travels as weightless particles called photons. We often talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. And the EM spectrum means all those different types of uh, rays. All right, now we get to the meat and potatoes, the things that we're going to use a lot of as we do some calculations. First thing is speed of light. Speed of light gets the letter C. And you've heard about this before in Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. And c is the speed of light. And the number is always the same in a vacuum. 3 times 10 to the 8th meters every second. And that is, I, as I understand it, that's about 7 times around the Earth. If you could make the light go in a circle, which is kind of hard to do, uh, it could go around the Earth 7 times in 1 second. That's just incredibly fast. The letter is c. It means the speed of light, and the number is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters every second. You know what a meter stick is this long. And 3 times 10 to the 8th means move the decimal 8 places over. So that's um, 300 million? 300, 300 million. Uh, 30 million uh, meters per second. Next, wavelength. And wavelength is this crazy... Um, crazy letter, it's called lambda. And lambda, here it is right here, you can see it. Lambda means the meters, how long a wavelength is. So if you go from the t top of one wavelength to the top of the next wavelength, that would be one, uh, that'd be one wavelength, and we would measure that with our meter stick. And we would say, aha, this right here is about 0.15 meters, that wavelength right there. Lambda. 
means the meters. Sometimes this is also called meters per cycle, with one cycle being one wave. Okay, from the top to the top or from the bottom to the bottom. And then there's the next thing is frequency, and frequency is given a symbol that's called nu, N-U. And it looks like a V except for it has a little tail on the beginning and a little bit of a tail on the end. That's called nu. Um, and that's the symbol for cycles per second. How many times does the light go up and down and up and down, or at least behave like it does, every second? And sometimes this is also called Hertz, named after, I believe his name was Heinrich Hertz, uh, who, a person who studied light um, back in the 1800s, I think. How many times does the light hit the crest? That's the frequency. We've got an equation, which is C equals lambda times nu. And what that means is the speed of light is equal to the wavelength of the light, how long the wavelength is, times the frequency of the light. So let's just talk a little bit about, let's compare some of these different types of wavelengths. So down here you can see, there's, I've, I've got a picture of a long wavelength of light, and then way at the bottom, a very, very, very short wavelength of light. Okay? So this one has a, a big number for lambda, but it doesn't reach the top very often. So therefore, its frequency is rather low. Frequency is kind of a low number, but its wavelength is kind of a big number. Those two numbers have to always equal C, so that's how it always goes. Look at this one here. Oh, the wavelength, the, the lambda, is very, very small because it's a short wavelength. But its frequency, how often it hits the top, its frequency is very high. So it's got a big nu, but a small lambda. Multiplied together, it gives you C every time. And then one more thing. Let's say that these photons were going to have a race from here to there. On your mark, get set, go. And they went this way. This is a trick question. Which one gets here first? It's a trick question because they all reach here at the same time because they're all electromagnetic radiation and they're all, you know, type of light and they all travel at the same exact speed, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So, we're all done with today's lesson. What did we do? First thing was, we uh, looked at uh, how light is transmitted or absorbed or reflected. Secondly, we thought about these different types of spectra, and we'll talk about this and do several labs with the, this. And then finally, what the heck is light all about? We talked about photons, these weightless particles, and the entire electromagnetic spectrum, all these different types of light from radio waves to microwaves to visible light, etc. And then we talked about these three um, these three, three numbers that we'll be using. C, which is the speed of light, lambda, which is the wavelength, and nu, which is the frequency. So, pretty bright idea talking about this, huh? So, we will uh, we'll see you again soon, and thank you for listening.